Let's take a look at this problem. It deals with absorption and variable costing income statements. It's problem 20-1b. All right, I'll read the problem in front of you. During the first month of operations ending September 30th, 2010, Hercules Video manufactured 2,160 computer monitors, of which 2,000 were sold. And we've got some operating data that you can see right in this area of uh, the problem. Okay, we've got sales data, we've got manufacturing data, and we've got uh, operating cost, right? Selling and administrative expense. And then what we're asked to do is prepare an income statement based on the absorption costing concept, and then prepare it again based on variable costing concept. And then we'll explain the differences between the two. Alright, now to save time in terms of making this presentation, I've worked just some of the text ahead of time. Let's tackle part one. Okay, we put together the top part of the income statement, and then we've got to drop in the data we need. Right? Well, we need we know we start off with sales, okay, and then we add cost of goods sold, or subtract cost of goods sold, whatever. So sales were a million nine. Alright, and we'll format that. Cost of goods sold then involves a couple calculations. First we have to determine the cost of goods manufactured. That they give to us is 1427760. So under absorption method we drop in that number. We'll format that in a little bit. And then of course we have to subtract out the ending inventory. Um, and we've got to calculate what that ending inventory is. We know they made 2160 above my mouse is where I'm getting that number from. And 2,000 were sold. So what we know is, um, actually I'll just put it in over here. We've got 160 left on hand, right? That's the 2,160 minus the 2,000. Now you can either see where I'm typing it in here, or you can look up to the formula bar and see how I'm doing this. And then we have to determine times a unit cost. All right. Well, how do we know what the unit cost is? Well, we take the full amount of the cost of goods sold, right? And we divide it by the number of units we made, which was 2,160. Okay? So, follow what I'm doing. I'm taking 160 units, the difference between what we manufactured minus what we sold, and we're taking the cost of the manufacturing, the full 2,160, and coming up with a per unit cost. So you take the million four two seven seven sixty, and you divide it by 2,160. Once I do that, I come up with 105,760, which is the lesson inventory. Just to spell that out, what I will say is it's 160 units. at a cost of six hundred and sixty one dollars. Six hundred and sixty one is essentially fourteen twenty seven sixty divided by the twenty one sixty. Okay, so there's where the six sixty one comes from. Okay, subtract that out. Come up with cost of goods sold of a million three two two zero. Put an underline here, take the sales less the Cost of goods sold at the number 578, and that represents gross profit, right? Next thing we have to subtract out would be selling and administrative expenses, and then it eventually comes down to income and operations. And that's enough to illustrate the absorption costing method. Okay, this is 266,000. Subtract that, and come up with 578 less 266. 312. Let me slide just a little bit here. Wait a minute. There. Now you can see a little bit more of it. And I would double underline that. Okay. Put a currency in there. Use the same format. We come up with 312,000. Now next we'll tackle a variable costing income statement. Okay. Now I've slid the screen a little bit so you can see that all I've done so far is copy the exact answer that we see here, down here, and 
relabeled it variable cost. So we've got to make some changes to make sure it's variable cost. One is we don't start off with cost of goods manu manufactured. We have to start off with just the variable portion. So let's write in variable cost of goods manufactured. Okay, and then the variable cost of goods is not the 142760 that's slide up. We have to subtract out the 226800 because that represents a fixed number in that. So that number becomes, I'll go up to the formula bar, <laughs> put an equal before it. Have to subtract out um, that fixed overhead portion, which was uh, well, I just said it, just lost. I'm going to type in 226 for now. 226 800. I'm going to slide on down. This becomes 226 800. We have a million two hundred. Then we subtract out less the ending inventory, um, and this time, what we have is, we have the correct number in here, but let's understand why. 2,160 units less 2,000 units times the variable cost divided by the 2,160. Okay, so in this case, it's 160 units times $556. The 556 came from total variable cost divided by Two one sixty units, right? There's the five fifty six. I'll just take that off so we see it. All right. So then we come down to not a gross profit, but something that you may call a manufacturing margin. And I've seen this called a lot of different things. But then we have to subtract off variable selling administrative costs. That was given in the problem above as 182,000. And that then gets us down to, let me sort of reformat this so we can go in here. That gets us down to 606,000, which rep would represent the contribution margin. Okay. Now, once we have contribution margin, then we need to back off the fixed costs. The fixed costs consist of fixed manufacturing costs. Then the fixed selling and administrative costs. Those are given up top in the problem. I'll indent a little bit, or I'll do it just once here, and show you there's our fixed cost number there. 2268 and the 84,000 that we're going to consider. So we drop in the 2268, we drop in the 84,000. sum those is that plus that or you could use the sum command either way will work it gets us 310 800 eventually it gets us down to income from operations I'll just copy from here I'll have to type it in we wind up with the contribution margin less the fixed cost to come down to 295,200 I'm going to format from this cell put it in there we get 295 200 that takes care of part two. Let's look at the problem again. Part three says explain the reason for the differences in the amounts of income from operations reported in one and two. Okay, now what, what you see on the screen now is the income statement under both the absorption costing and the variable costing. So what explains the difference? The income from operations reported under absorption costing is higher. And it's higher uh, by by sixteen thousand eight hundred, which is the three twelve less the two ninety five two hundred. Right, so we compare income from operations, the bottom line, if you will, between the two versions. And this difference is due to including sixteen thousand eight hundred in fixed manufacturing cost in inventory under absorption costing. Right, so it's one hundred and sixty units times one hundred and five dollars. One hundred and five dollars is the uh, 226,800 units divided by 2,000, or excuse me, $226,800 of fixed manufacturing cost right there divided by 
2,160 units made. So if we take the 226,800 divided by 2,160, we come up with $105 of overhead per unit. Take that times the 160 units, and that will calculate the 16,800 difference. So what we see is the 16,800 is deferred to a future month when we use absorption costing, but it's included as an expense of September, a part of fixed cost, when we use variable costing. That takes care of this problem, everyone. Thank you.